record. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so, and let's see if Mar is Marcello back. Not yet. I'm back. Okay. So okay. sorry for that, but I think Marcello is now now reconnecting. Yep, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. So sorry. It's it's better if we just start over. Okay, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> What happened? Ah, uh, it's it's even though the others were co-hosts, I could not leave the room without the the meeting being ended. I see. So, okay. Yeah. So live and learn. <laughs> yeah. No, because what happened? Like yesterday, we sent a link. Then uh, uh, you know, Marcus, we tried to upgrade the account, and Marcus sent another link. But you know, we are still learning about these possibilities that uh, yeah. Zoom offers. Yeah. But uh, we are okay now. We are uh, back to. Uh, uh, okay, then uh, Marcello, uh, like uh, or Marcus, you can start again where we, where we kind of uh, stopped before. Yeah, let's start it again. And okay, thanks sure. everyone for being here. I'll just start it back so we can uh, uh, also the people on the recording in YouTube can enjoy the the presentation and uh, welcome everyone uh, again uh, for being here. Um, Marcus just a few minutes ago uh, mentioned uh, that this is one of the craziest projects uh, he joined and uh, as uh, we briefly discussed this is really crazy music and I had the pleasure to write the lineup notes and to meet with those guys I greeted him greeted all of them saying uh, you are very crazy for doing that and uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll convene with me that uh, this is really insane music. All of us have been exposed to great uh, jazz, uh, improvisation, prog rock oriented music in our lives, uh, but it is something really insane that uh, Leonardo Kopakovic uh, settled with all those musicians. And uh, starting from the first one, and uh, do we have already back on the line uh, Mas Dwiki Dharma one? Yes, we have. Hello. Okay, I can see it. Welcome back. And uh, he was joined uh, by touch guitarist uh, Meister Marcus Reuter and uh, by at the rhythm uh, section by Asaf Sirkis uh, and finally the great voice uh, of Boris Salvoldelli. So the four of them uh, created uh, this, uh, insane, this insane music that is Hari Ketika and uh, they were joined uh, actually by other people uh, to finalize a product that's probably more closer, that's probably closer to Beaches Brew, sort of a, a very gigantic Beaches Brew opera than uh, everything else. Uh, Leo, I was just going to uh, hand it over to you. Maybe you can provide uh, uh, more uh, insights about uh, how this all started, when, and especially the location, which plays a crucial role right uh yeah this started in uh, uh as a plan in uh, 2016 because we already were doing a, a recording for a couple of years at la casa morada and uh, in 2016 then uh, when i was in indonesia i said to Dricky, said Dricky, like you know let's record in this magic place and uh, we can record with asaf and yaron because they are based in europe and we can record with my friend uh, carles benavent who is uh, based in barcelona and then we arrived in 2017 to record multiple projects. And I have to say that this uh, project Hari Ketiga in Indonesian Bahas language means the third day. Why is it called the third day? Because it was recorded on the third day of Dviki Darmavan multiple sessions. First two days we recorded an album called um, Ruma Batu, uh, which is with Carles Benavent, Yaron Stavi, Asaf Sirkis, uh, and uh, Nguyen Lee. And then that was kind of uh, mostly kind of composed music, you know, very elaborated composed music. Then Marcus came uh, and then uh, Boris as well from uh, Italy and Asa was already there. I said to Vicky, look, you know, we need to do like improvisational something improv because I wanted to connect Vicky and Marcus because Vicky already uh, uh, collaborated with Boris and especially with Asa. But I always believed that uh, Dwicky and Marcus can create some amazing music together because the way that Marcus plays, it benefits all other musicians. And that's exactly what happened. See, like Marcus is known as a ferocious uh, uh, kind of a soloist, but also it's great, it's known also as a guy who is listening to other people. And then Dwicky was able to fly with 
all his talent. And this was recorded in uh, the beautiful La Casa Murada, which is 11th and 14th century farmhouse, one hour west of Barcelona. I will be actually moving next year very close to that area. And uh, it's a very magic place. It's middle of nowhere, like uh, vineyards and uh, all around like Mediterranean kind of uh, surroundings, like only like 20 kilometers uh, from the Adriatic, uh, from the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, everything was great. We had a great uh, sounding engineer who is an amazing person. We had amazing people and uh, and just magic just happened. Uh, like musician didn't talk about uh, what kind of music to do, uh, which key, nothing. They just started playing. And uh, simply they played for uh, almost four hours. And then what is on album, it's not everything. It's kind of uh, maybe two thirds of the, of, the, of the whole thing, like around 155, 156 minutes, it's a double CD. And then after uh, that session uh, happened, when I came back to New York, I was listening to that. And I don't know, something uh, took me, kind of uh, possessed me. And I went to, you know, I'm not uh, very good with uh, technicalities about recording, but I have very basic uh, garage band software on my Mac. And I just started playing, like in a matter of uh, two hours, I just took certain parts because the improvisations were very long. One improvisation was like for uh, 75 minutes. We are talking about very, you know, they were just playing like, you know, like nothing else exists in this world. And then I just, I heard story in my, my head and I just moved things around. And then mm -hmm. I contacted uh, 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 Boris and I was feeling that there is something, uh, there is something wrong in the world. And I said to Boris, I look, we have to add some lyrics here because there is a story. And he, Boris said, look, I have a friend of mine who is a lyricist, Alessandro Ducoli, we will write some story. And then he added lyrics. Actually, the whole album was recorded live, no other dubs, but Boris recorded lyrics in Italian. And uh, maybe Marcello, Marcello, are you here? Can you hear us? Yep, yeah. Yes. Okay. Maybe Marcello, now you can kind of, uh, from your perspective, kind of explain kind of uh, this kind of thing that uh, you can better explain than me because, you know, I will be very subjective, like, you know, to explain how this kind of, because you know everything about this album, how these things happen, like, you know, from getting like a, a rough uh, kind of mix, changing things around. Actually, I never cut the music. I just took the parts, like, and then, you know, there is nothing is amended, like it's just, that, that, that was played. But then I just changed the order of the tunes. And then I uh, ask uh, Boris to add some lyrics, some uh, vocal effects. Maybe you can elaborate this from your uh, sub, uh, objective perspective. I will start uh, from, uh, uh, not my words, I will start from uh, uh, something that Boris mentioned when I had a chat with him, which was uh, uh, really super interesting. Uh, just a few minutes ago, we spoke about uh, uh, Beaches Brew, okay, uh, everyone has trills when mentioning uh, this uh, incredible, this is most important album. And uh, Boris mentioned something very, very uh, interesting when we had a chat about Ari Ketiga. He told uh, Leonardo is uh, kind of acting like uh, Tio Masero and Miles Davis at the same time. Okay, that's a very, very uh, important comparison for you, Leo. But let me explain. Uh, Boris told uh, uh, Tio Masero uh, brought the uh, the final tapes of uh, uh, Beaches Brew and created something completely new. And uh, this sort of uh, uh, Ari Ketiga is something completely different from the hours of improvisation. You will hear uh, cuts here and there. You will hear, uh, you will hear uh, some um, recordings that happened after that session. You will hear uh, at that sound a lot of work uh, uh, been done by Mark Winfield during the editing session. But you also acted, Leo, as a um, center for many musicians uh, uh, to allow them to play together uh, with really no rule, no rule attached. Uh, every one of them came in the room and uh, everybody can feel that there is pure improvisation and really every one of them bringing what they had 
and uh, when you came back, you rearranged the tapes. I remember uh, listening to the very early tapes, and they were very different in a certain way from the, what they are now. So there's been a lot of work uh, in just the last three years in creating what is now um, Hari Kediga. So uh, probably I will uh, hand it over to the very first person uh, who did this uh, work immediately after uh, those tapes were recorded. So probably to Boris who received back those tapes and he wanted to add something else. Yeah, because and, uh, actually uh, I, when I sent, uh, uh, that was kind of uh, in the middle of the summer, uh, in early August or late July of 2017, I sent, the first person that I sent, it's Boris, I actually didn't send anything to other musicians. And I said to Boris, Boris, we have to do something here. And then uh, actually me and Boris started kind of working on, on that. And then we, when we presented that idea to Dwicky, Dwicky said, oh, wow, like you know, this is you know, something else. And then Boris, tell, tell, tell us uh, your, your story uh, when you received those uh, uh, kind of cuts from yeah, the music sure. that I sent you. First of all, ciao everybody. I'm very happy you all are here. I'm very honored to be part of this presentation and to be part of this album, which was really, really magic. Everything that Leonardo and Marcello said is absolutely true. And the situation there was, first of all, magic, I, I can tell you. All the week was magic because this idea that Leonardo got to put all of us into the, the magic of, of La Casa Murada is something incredible. It's something really that reminds me when I was reading those books, you know, those biographies about those big, amazing albums where people just stayed together for days and days and produce the music. That's what happened, you know, uh, that week. And Ari Ketiga, and my friend Wiki can tell you, it means in, in Indonesian the third day, because the recording had been recorded on the third day of this amazing week. And uh, what happened was really something magic. We just came into the room, and this is another great thing. Marcello told you about my idea of this kind of beaches brew, and Leonardo was working like Theo Massaro, uh, uh, working on these tapes and cutting these tapes out. Also, what Leonardo did is, is I used to call Leonardo is a kind of uh, uh, the chemistry uh, of music because uh, he asked us to play together. And of course, I had the honor to play together with Vicky in the past, same as with Asaf. But for example, I never had the pleasure to play with Marcus. And uh, Marcus never played with me. So he just put together those people who never play in that combo, in that situation together. That was a kind of crazy in the first time. But after like, I think 20 minutes, uh, half an hour, we just, everything flew very, very naturally. And we didn't have a chart. We didn't have scores pre-written before. We just have, I mean, the feelings. We just start to listen to each other and we just start to, just the music flow and, 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 and everything works so naturally. And we also, we didn't understand how much time was going on. And, and, and when we finished the session, we realized we played for hours, you know. And during this session, coming to the question of Marcello, during this session, I was just trying to, to put my voice uh, as an instrument, as, as I like to do, and as I was free to do in this uh, special recording. And I just put some kind of uh, secret moments. I just put some small melodies time to time that I was thinking about that could fit in that particular moment. But I didn't want to ruin it. I just wanted to flew with the music. And when we came back and when Leonardo uh, wrote me about, and if you remember, Leonardo, you wrote me about that sometime, but I didn't realize it. I just started to do some spontaneous words, some in Italian, some in English, and it came out the word Planet Gaia. And Leonardo was, was amazed by this Planet Gaia, and he told me about this. Oh, just, just think about something about this Planet Gaia. And this was a kind of uh, a thing that I asked to, to, to Alessandro, uh, um, who was the, who is the lyricist of the album to to talk about? So, when when all the things came back to me, I just find it out that the cut part by Leonardo contains those kind of secrets melody that I put, and so little by little I start to develop those those melodies again, 
And when I had those melodies, just in the form of melody, just in, in written music, no words, I just gave everything to Alessandro and start to, to talk to Alessandro about the session, the experience of the session. Uh, Alessandro is a very creative guy and, and a great lyricist and a great writer. And he just started to, to take all these informations, you know, from me, from Leonardo, and start to write down the story. And, and he also talked about the Gaia, the Gaia planet, of course, and he came out with this incredible story divided into eight chapters. And, uh, and, well, the story. Nine. Nine. Well. Nine. <laughs> nine chapters. Nine, nine chapters, okay. sorry. Yes, but right. but uh, this is the thing, like, you know, about this kind of imaginary planet Gaia, because, as I say, like, in 2017, we were already kind of feeling that there is something very wrong happening in this world. Yep. Not just in USA, not just in Europe, yep. everywhere in the world. The world is becoming a little bit crazy. And when we were in that uh, La Casa Murada, we were kind of on our own planet. Uh, but we were, uh, uh, you know, all around our little planet, little oasis, you know, there was that uh, troubled world. And uh, that's why uh, when you were doing this kind of Italian haiku, like uh, Planet Gay or other things, like, you know, I said, like, you know, okay, let's invent the story that we are there we are kind of uh, isolated from this world. We don't like this world, but we, will, will, we would like to fight for a better world. And then let's create this kind of imaginary kind of, uh, kind of uh, fight against the evil. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and this is actually album what it's all about. And, uh, and actually this is only first uh, chapter of the, of, the, of the thing because we will record another album because Everything you now in this album, imaginarily, is happening on this planet. But we would like to do, go to another planet, to planet Gaia. In the next album, we will actually figuratively record on planet Gaia. It will be kind of sci-fi album. I don't know, you know, musicians will improvise. Then from that planet, we will come back triumphantly to the Earth. It's kind of like an kind of imaginary trilogy of the, of the hope that this world can be a better place to be because Unfortunately, it is not. Uh, and, you know, and, and Alessandro and Boris were very good in, uh, in uh, uh, perceiving that idea. And Alessandro created this kind of uh, great kind of uh, lyrics based on uh, a Latin uh, Roman poet, Lucretius. He can explain that a little bit better. And, uh, and Boris just uh, overdubbed that uh, actually that same year. Actually, this, uh, this album took like a little bit long to be released for various reasons, but I believe that right now it's just a perfect time to be released. And uh, maybe, Alessandro, you can tell us, uh, like continue the story of Boris and, uh, and tell us uh, kind of uh, what you have heard when you first heard the album and when you spoke to Boris, what has to be done in terms of lyrics. Okay, you listen to me? Yeah. Okay, first I have to say thank you everybody because for me it's a very, very incredible experience with these wonderful musicians. And this wonderful project is very, very crazy, but amazing too. Boris came to me as usual after some recording and told me about this project and uh, sent me uh, the records, the line, uh, the music lines, and tell me what do you think about a, uh, a kind of um, space story? It's, um, it's easy and easy and easy explain. And uh, I've list, I have listened the the tracks for three or four days, and um, I said for me it's really interesting because he said uh, that um, Dwicky and the whole team need to. Um, made a kind of um, um, uh, her earth scream, her less scream, a kind of uh, uh, ambientalist. Uh, Marcello, help me. Messaggio uh, ambientalista. Salviamo il pianeta. Yeah, that's much of the, really of the uh, um, ecology, of the view of the, uh, trying really to find a different view of the of the it's all about the saving the planet the, yeah yeah yes and for me it's really easy because uh, uh, my job is uh, forest planning and uh, every day I have to work and uh, 
forest conservations. And uh, so after that, I have uh, this idea about uh, Lucrezio, huge opera, the real natura, because uh, uh, Lucrezio is a, is a, is a master of a, 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 a great people like uh, uh, Charles Darwin, J.B. Lamarck. My, I have studied in university this, uh, this uh, personaggi, this, um, this, this scientist. And uh, my point of view, it's uh, our point of view, it's uh, always the point of view of man not the point of view of science. So I tried to imagine uh, a murder, or obviously uh, the, the earth murdered by man, and um, uh, the third uh, character in this, uh, in this story mm -hmm. is the event horizon. He don't have a, a soul, he don't have a conscience. He is pure, is pure uh, physics, is pure uh, chemical process. So he watch this, uh, the, 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 these two characters uh, analyze uh, the l'accaduto, the fact, uh, a murder, a murderer, who what's happened, and uh, the entire story play about this um, philosophical analysis of uh, the main point of view of everybody. And um, it's really difficult because I tried to put a, a sci-fi story, but you know, it, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of novel, but it's really hard after Asimov, uh, Douglas Adams, uh, uh, Farmer, making a new, a new sci-fi uh, story in, uh, in the space, but I think it's a great job because uh, um, we do, we do. And the music is really incredible because uh, I have to listen maybe, maybe 50 or maybe a hundred times the recording. And that's because it's really huge project project. And it's uh, the main difficult by me, it's uh, continue to m maintain every side of music in a unique project, but amazing job. I'm, I'm very happy because we do. I hope you understand, but you have to know that I, I am a lyricist of the, of the, of the project, but uh, the, the only one I think that talking a little bit English, <laughs> with lyrics in English, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a jerk. <laughs> But no worries, there's a booklet of like 18 pages, so you can read everything that, that, that Alessandro yeah. told them. And also, yes, yes. Uh, he, he couldn't join because he's a hiking as every Sunday, like my very good friend from Seattle, Dennis Ray. He, uh, he actually was, uh, you know, he, he's a professional writer and uh, he made uh, kind of uh, all the text by Marcello and Alessandro, like uh, in a proper English, of course, Marcello and Alessandro you know, approved everything. And, you know, we had a very good team uh, in all this. And uh, I guess I would like uh, uh, to go now to Asaf. We will uh, talk to Maestro Dviki later, but Asaf, let us know, like, you know, of course you did that session for two days before with uh, yeah. Neguen Lee, Yaron Stavi, um, and, uh, um, uh, and uh, Carles Benevent. That's and, right, yeah. Uh, for two days, uh, it was very much involved music and, uh, but then that third day, the Hari Katiga day, uh, you know, uh, tell us your uh, your impression on, 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 on that. Yeah, well, I mean, in, in terms, I mean, maybe comparing the two sessions is a good departure, I guess, right. to, to, to understand what it was from, from my point of view. So here's the thing. You know, when, when I do a normal, quote unquote, normal music project, which is, uh, you know, a anything around the year, but, you know, uh, coming to La Casa Murada and then everything becomes different <laughs> than normal. But what, what I mean, usually when I do most music project, it kind of, um, I'm kind of, kind of directed in a way to um, put out of myself a certain side of myself in order to serve the music. And I always try to do that to the best of my ability, you know, play for the music, 
you know, think about what the composer or what the band leader is, uh, is, uh, is thinking about and try, try to complement that and echo that somehow in the way I play and serve mm -hmm. the music. And it's usually, you know, some projects, you can say they're jazz, you know, I don't like that word at all, but they're jazz. Some projects are pop, some projects are fusion, some projects are, you know, cover versions of other composers. This pro project was so different in the sense that, you know, if you, if you can imagine a, a big cupboard of, and, and, and this cupboard represents what you can do as a musician. So when I do a normal project, I, I go to one compartment of the cupboard and I open it and I, I, I get out something that I need to serve the music. <clears throat> in, the, in, the, in the case of Hari Ketiga, I, happen, I had to open all, all the compartment. I had to open everything and to go to the shop to buy a new cupboard and to put on top of that. <laughs> because, you know, one of the things I really loved, uh, and especially what I love about Wiki's playing, is that there is no sense of, oh, I, I shouldn't play that because it's not jazz, or I shouldn't play that because it's not, or it is something. You know, we all are musicians who play different styles of music. So, for instance, I'm known for playing jazz or Middle Eastern jazz or... or or improvise me whatever whatever I, I, I'm known for. I don't even know, but there's so much more uh, that is happening in life of a musician. So, for instance, I, I sometimes do pop sessions for singers that are straight pop or really really commercial work because you know we all need to make a living. We all need to uh, to play music and and you know and pay the pay the bills, pay the rent. So. So usually in other artistic, so-called artistic project, we kind of put that in the back. I, I don't want all this commercial stuff to come inside this artistic stuff. Here it was, there was nothing like that. Everything was there. It's like you, you come to the kitchen and uh, you, you try to cook something and you say, oh, let me put a little bit of cumin and a little bit of curry. No, let's put everything, everything we've got. <laughs> put it all in the big goulash of of <laughs> intense and amazing music that is really the the uh, one one side of it is the personalities of uh, each one of the great musicians that I I I feel very honored to to play with but on, on the other hand it's also the situation la casa morada munjun the whole approach is let's go and do something that nobody else does, okay? So I had to be, I think, in this uh, project, in, in terms of my own playing, I had to be the most resourceful. And I, uh, in, in the sense that I really had to pull from everywhere, you know? So, like, I, on this uh, recording, I played some, um, you know, drumming style that you can call free jazz or whatever but i also play a drumming style that could i could have played back in the 90s when i worked five nights a week in w jewish weddings as well you know it's all there it's really all there and i feel um, i feel very fortunate to be in a situation situation where nothing is you know everything is allowed you know you can show every side of yourself without uh, criticism, without the fear of, oh, it's not cool, or it's not jazz, or it's not whatever. Uh, and so, for, for my experience, it was extremely colorful. Um, and, you know, from one side, very challenging, but from another side, very easy as well, because I was just feeling I'm being myself, and I'm showing myself in many, many, many different sides and many, many different styles of my play that I've developed over the years, I guess. Uh, yeah, I would like to add something before I uh, ask Vicky for comment, because we had this kind of uh, need for complete and absolute freedom. 
see, like I, I have to tell my little uh, background story. I was born in uh, former Yugoslavia in a today's region of uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, which is new country. Even though no one from my family is actually from Bosnia, they came after 1944, uh, five after the war, they come to this region. They're coming from all over the Mediterranean region, from Montenegro, from uh, Croatia, from Turkey, Lebanon, whatever. But uh, I had a very difficult childhood, but I always was a very optimistic person. And I always was looking for absolute freedom. I uh, never wanted to uh, be part of any group of anything. I was just wanted to be myself. And it was very difficult to be uh, uh, myself. Then I moved to Italy after growing up with my grandparents. And I, even though like uh, the life was great, I was in Mediterranean Italy, in Apulia, Southern Italy, it was everything great, but something was missing. And that thing that was missing was uh, that freedom, uh, my personal freedom. Then when I came in New York uh, 30 years ago, exactly, I achieved that freedom, but I still was thinking that I don't have that freedom. Uh, something was missing, but when we started the La Casa Morada session in 2016, uh, the first day recording was with Asaf, with you, with Marcus, with Mark Winfield. Something happened in my head because I think that's exactly freedom. And actually we re re released the two albums from those sessions. First day, it's uh, the album that released the, the second one, Lighthouse. And the second day was with Yaron Stavi, who accidentally was there because he's supposed to do another session. We just asked him, can you play with us? And we recorded the Stone House, which is the first album released from those sessions. And that's when I was feeling, I said, wow, this is exactly what I wanted to do. Like, because the ambience was great, environment was great, everything is great. We were great. We were feeling the absolute freedom. See, like I'm not musician, but that represents exactly kind of music that I always wanted to imagine. Uh, it's, it's a freedom because nobody was... Uh, saying to other guy like what to do uh, you know like uh, you know it was just flowing spontaneously like uh, there is a lot of uh, of recording material that didn't end up on those albums but every single second was absolute uh, manifesto of the personal and collective freedom and uh, this Hari Ketiga is just kind of uh, kind of uh, next step and I believe that, you know, once we go there or not necessarily in La Casa Murada, but we are planning to do many other sessions there, especially when I move in that uh, part of the world, just to continue to exercise this freedom, not necessarily with improvised music, but also with music that is written. See, like uh, even the music that we did, like uh, with uh, Mark Finfield, Tales from the Dreaming City, which is a kind of composed music, or Dwicky's album, Ruma Batu, or a couple of other albums, like the one that you did with Dushan Yevtovic and Vasil Hadjimanov, No Answer. Those are composed albums, but still the sense for freedom was always there. We were happy, you know, like first year I was the cook, second year we were ordering food. The third year, like my friend from Spain, from uh, a Bosnian guy, but who lives in Sweden, who is a professional chef came, he cooked for everybody. Like we were just playing in one room, which is a beautiful kind of 11th century room. Then we were going to the kitchen, which is located in the 14th century part of the, of the, of the building. And we were just eating and drinking great wine. Asaf does drink, but everybody else was drinking uh, great wine. And we were just feeling so good. We are going outside. There's that Mediterranean flavor and smell. And we were just happy. And I remember one year, Mark was supposed to come like two years ago to come to the session to do some, you know, more music, but unfortunately he couldn't come. He was at the airport, I believe in Düsseldorf, and then uh, the flight was canceled. Then after it was canceled, they had kind of a, a strike all over the Europe and he couldn't come. And then uh, no flights the next day and he's supposed to go to Kazakhstan a few days later for a festival and then he couldn't come. And, you know, and that's the, you know, my, uh, Asaf, you are the only one with me who uh, did all the years. Mark was supposed to be that year, but you know, and also Mark was supposed to be there all, but last year he was sick and he couldn't come. And, uh, but this is the thing, like, you know, it's uh, absolute freedom. And now I will pass a uh, word to uh, my friend for many, many years, my Indonesian brother, Dviki Dermavan, because he can say about that freedom, how he felt that freedom, not only with Asaf and Boris, with whom they played for several years before that, but also with Marcus. Marcus allowed in him to be freer than ever. Okay, Ma Maestro Vicky, it's your turn. Thank you, Leonardo. Assalamualaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good midnight, everyone. 
Yes, uh, this is the wildest exploration that have occurred in my music. I think uh, everything goes like not too too many planned before, but then like magic all goes and uh, this music just happened. I just follow my heart and uh, I heard music from Marcus, the sound from Asa, from Boris. There is a spirit of encouragement from the atmosphere that of course the openness for uh, Leonardo, the person that's really open, very special, make us breaking free is something that is not easy at the beginning. Yes, of course, I want to thank everyone for uh, the extraordinary contribution and roles. I'm very honored to be among such extraordinary ordinary people. It's an amazing experience and unlimited exploration. Regardless of industrial boundaries, there was, I got the self-liberation. Of course, my native culture was carried away into the spirit that happened. Once again, enjoy. I, I like uh, giving uh, the energy that could never be imagined before. Uh, the first music I know after I was born to this world is uh, the gamelan, the Sundanese gamelan music. Sundanese in the second, Sunda is the second largest ethnic group in Indonesia. <clears throat> My country is the biggest archipelago with 17,000 islands. And I am from uh, Java Island, west part of Java Island. And Gamlan has its own, uh, the tone scale, uh, its own rhythm, of course, the, the standard tone and, and soul. So it's always carried, carried away with my, uh, my culture and work culture. And I think, uh, yeah, uh, also uh, don't forget uh, we, have, we have something from uh, one of the outer islands in, in Eastern Indonesia, it's called Rote Islands, uh, provides uh, additional inspiration where uh, I bring some, some pre-recorded of uh, the music of Sasando and the ancient vocal that cannot be found anywhere. It's, it's, it's uh, originally from uh, 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 Rote, Rote Island. In, in east of Indonesia, one of the outer islands. Yeah, I was lured by and it carried away with how I treat. I treat uh, the piano is uh, like acting on something that is on my heart. Not only uh, the instrument, not only the, the music instrument. And <clears throat> this is never imagined before and of course also something new also for me after the release uh, the first album with Moon Jun uh, so far so close and comes with Pasar Klewer and with uh, Rumah Batu but this is this is uh, really really yeah, uh, never imagined before. And I really admire all the musicians and whoever is involved in this project. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the music. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dwicky. I, uh, I think uh, Leonardo just asked me that we listen to uh, this album, The Truth, The Fact, is done because uh, uh, I will tell you just briefly what happened here. Like all music was improvised, but this is something that we actually uh, implemented in a preview session when we did one long improvisation with Miguel Lee, Carlos Benaventi, Aaron Stavi, Asaf, and uh, Wiki. 
uh, Dwicky brought some uh, music that he, uh, Dwicky is uh, kind of uh, ethnomusicologist also. He records uh, 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 kind of uh, music from all, all around Indonesia. And he brought for this session several kind of pre-recorded chants in music, popular music from uh, remote villages. In this part, in this tune, the true, the fact is done, uh, there is a, 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 a he just a, a sound a sound engineer Jesus Ravira just put that sound musicians were listening and they just started like playing like you know and you will you will hear what is happening Marcus you can go and uh, and play this tune.
yeah, that, yeah, that, was, that was one of the that wow. Was, that was one of the normal. That was one of the couple of the normal nor, normal tunes because uh, the shortest, the shortest one, the shortest one, and uh, one of two very normal tunes. Romantic side of the romantic. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a romantic side, the quiet side of the craziness. The ballad. The ballad, you know. <laughs> and uh, see, like you know, this is, was uh, kind of even though it was improvised music with a strong jazz attitude. At the end, you know, we were, you know, somehow it became also sort of progressive rock. Kind of, uh, you know, it's very difficult to explain what it is, but uh, and also I have to uh, underline the amazing Dwiki Dermaman on a mini moog. It's a very Kind of, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, microtonal playing, like very typical for Indonesia. And uh, of course, he plays mostly acoustic piano. He plays some Fender Rhodes, some uh, Mini Moog, and also he played harmonium. Uh, uh, we didn't include in this album uh, parts that they include harmonium, but on the album there are little parts when you can hear his harmonium and has that kind of beautiful kind of Indian Eastern kind of uh, vibe. I believe, uh, Leo, what is very stunning in this track, I just realized it now. It's uh, basically two years uh, since I've been listening to these tracks uh, uh, for the first time. And I realized it now the impressive work that uh, Marcus uh, is uh, really doing in here in the background. And um, he's really acting as the glue of uh, the musicians Absolutely. like to to create a bridge uh, within that. I remember the first time that I chatted with Marcus, uh, he told me that uh, he brought some very specific uh, sets, uh, some uh, um, very uh, new sounds he, he hadn't used before. Marcus, yeah. maybe you can tell us more. Yeah, that's that's true. You know, for for this project, I actually brought completely new effect pedals that I hadn't had a chance to use before, and I, you know, I was determined to use them. Uh, in a very uh, unusual ways, let's say. But then, as you know, as I realized that that band didn't have a bass player, um, you know, it occurred to me I sh that I should also play the bass. And but I didn't want to approach that just like a bass player, which I also could have done with my guitar. But uh, I started kind of like building these textures that had like very low notes in them, and. On top of that, I played like really aggressively, uh, crazy, uh, also microtonal parts um, that kind of became the bass lines. And um, I have to say, I'm I'm very 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 kind of proud of this. But also, um, Mark Wingfield, who I also worked closely with when he was mixing this, uh, it was was surely not easy <laughs> for him. And because of all that low end information, and uh, and but. I have to say it was really for me like one of the most extraordinary uh, experiences uh, recording this album because for some reason I felt very, very, very uh, exhausted after it, which I'd say usually is a good sign, right? But it was really, it was too much. I remember, I, I don't know, uh, you know, I could have slept for three days after this recording session and uh, and Dwiki is just uh, as... We, was already said it's just so amazing and he doesn't really um like he may actually be like the the, the freest player of all, of us all in this in on this album and generally like he was just kept going and kept developing these ideas and uh so uh, as we you know mentioned some tracks were were 75 minutes long so it's yeah. incredible mm -hmm. and it's kind of great that on the album since it's uh, it's a double cd you can kind of follow this development and it re very much kind of fits with the theme and the uh, you know the lyrics and and Boris's you know this this idea that Boris had to not only use the original vocals but to overdub vocals it's kind of like a stroke of genius I, I find because that that kind of gives gives the whole thing like this this uh, almost operatic or uh, um, you know musical theater kind of vibe and um, I, I think it's pretty it's very much a, a unique combination yeah, but I have to add something uh, uh, about you and, and Adviki. See, as I always say, like, you know, you are kind of musicians that uh, 
you always play with excellent musicians, but you make them even excellenter because you have this, <laughs> no, you have this ability because see like as a neutral uh, observer, as a guy who is not musician, but a guy who listened over 15, 20,000 albums in my life, like I see this, like, you know, because I believe that uh, every musician had hugely benefited from uh, playing with you because you are not just so-called guitar player. You are not just the guy who plays there, like, but you are actually doing so much work that allows freedom to other musicians. And I have to say, like, you know, like, uh, you know, look, I met you first time at Iridium in 2011 and uh, I saw a huge improvement on Stickman. And since I met you, like Stickman was just going like space, uh, like a, a space uh, kind of a, a rocket, uh, like, you know, <laughs> up and up. And, and uh, Pat and, uh, uh, and Tony, they acknowledged that. You know, uh, Tony told me many times, you know, like, uh, you know, Marcus is the guy. Even if uh, when Tony brings his own tunes, it's a Marcus, the guy who puts them kind of into kind of the, you know, the thing that is the thing. And, uh, you know, I see like uh, Asaf is playing different kind of music with Marcus, Mark Greenfield, all these guys like, uh, uh, and Dwicky, like Dwicky told me because absence of a bass player. See, like on previous session, we had two bass players. Of course, Carlos Benement plays bass very differently than any other bass player, but he had upright bass by Aaron Stavi. But then this third day, Hari Katiga day, no bass. And actually you provided that extra texture space for Dwicky just to go everywhere he wanted. And Dwicky is kind of like me a little bit. That's why we are good brothers, because he doesn't stop. He's like a volcanic explosion. Like, you know, he's just, you know, he he will not he will not leave you in peace. I remember I was there with my friend Francisco Macias, who came from Malaga, because actually that day was my birthday, 53rd birthday. And he came from Malaga, we were watching, and, and you guys, we supposed to eat, and food already arrived. And me and Francisco were looking at uh, through the that uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 window, and because I just came from the room where I was taking some pictures and video, and then Dwicky was doing something that I felt that tune is ending. It was around after like forty minutes of playing, and I just knocked on the on the on that window. I don't know if Dwicky uh, uh, saw me. Maybe he saw me subconsciously and he just went like to somewhere else and you guy play for another 40 minutes and then uh, you know and you were hungry and uh, we made like a longish uh, uh, longish break and it was just because and then Asaf say wow we played a lot I think we played 40 minutes I say no it's 72 73 minutes I don't remember like you know I say really because you were just disconnected from uh, time and space and which means this is uh, you guys reached absolute freedom mm -hmm. yeah i guess we were all in this place where we where we were serving the music and that's really how i see my role i mean no matter how you describe it leo and i, I believe you what you're saying and what you're hearing but really for me it's just serving the music supporting yeah, of course. support supporting the other musicians also you know so in in a way and that's why i think i felt so exhausted i was kind of like chasing chasing everybody else a little bit you know yeah. like trying to trying to always yeah. be there for them and because there was no bass player you know just just giving that, you that were low the end captain, so. okay you were the real captain of the ship you know like uh, and uh, because if you leave the wiki he will just go like like boom like atomic bomb but you were the captain of the ship no no there is a kind of ice <laughs> there, like, you know, we have to go this direction you know and you know you you were really kind of a captain of the ship yes <laughs> Shall we listen to one more song? Maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, I'm uh, debating if you uh, can listen the first song or maybe the crazy song number uh, uh, four. Uh, uh, you, which which uh, one is it? Uh, like uh, the loneliness of the universe. That's my favorite okay. one. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's listen to maybe like like the first half of it or something. Uh, yeah, let's 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 go with the flow, like you know, let's uh, because this is okay. a, actually crazy tune, uh, and uh, maybe look, let's listen, let let's go listen, and you know, we will see. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Was it, what do you want? Yeah, it's like, I think it's like when you have like.
sono l'allievo delle cose sconosciute sono l'astronauta degli spazi della mente io sono il carnefice di tutta questa luce come l'assassino della terra dei mortali sono ancora qui sono sempre qui sono ancora qui sono sempre qui Yeah, this is actually what I was talking before. This is the tune when uh, they, uh, the music went a little bit down and then I said to Dwicky, continue. And this is the part of the 75 minutes improvisation. And what you heard now, it's only one sixth of the album. These two little tunes. <laughs> There's so much to explore. And uh, I'm very happy about uh, this and that I have these amazing friends who are my friends, who are among my favorite musicians, that we can actually do this. That I actually was able to find, thanks to a Serbian guitar player who lives in Barcelona, uh, Dusan Jevtovic and a drummer, Chavi Reha, I was able to find this place, La Casa Murada, which actually changed my life. Because a few years ago, I was thinking like uh, to move somewhere after 10 years in New York, and uh, I had a couple of other options. But then I decided that this is the place to move because only magic happens and uh, it's really great thank you Dwicky. thank you marcus boris and asaf and thank you marco is not here thank you marcello alessandro and bruno you know this is a very special project absolutely and and, uh, and i just want to add one thing if i if i may of course. just one short a little thing uh Leonardo, I don't know if you remember, about a couple of years ago, we were, you were with me in the car, 
and we were touring, we we're doing the, the tour with uh, Deva Bujana and, uh, and Nicolas, Nicolas Meyer. And Jimmy Haslip, yeah. That's right. And, and we were listening, you know, with like, you know, miles and miles and miles in the UK and Europe. I can't I remember. I think we were and going the, to uh, Marsden to Northern England. Uh, was something very, like that. It was a yeah. very long uh, like drive and we were listening uh, not once but twice. Yeah, and I, I, I just suddenly thought now, you know, usually when, when people play like they call it free jazz or free music, it's usually really fun to play, but when, when you listen, it's, it's intense, you know, it's like, you know, it's a bit dissonant and, and, and uh, you know, it's not like you listen to normal music. With this music, it was fun, so much fun to play, but like... 10 times more fun to listen and I, and I remember how, how we were enjoying ourselves during that long drive to Marsden or whatever, just listening to the whole thing through. And I think at the time we didn't have the, uh, the actual edited version, so it was long, like t t two or three um, CDs were there and we were just, we forgot about the way I remember that, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, uh, see, like, uh, you know, probably uh, Alessandro, uh, Mark, Wingfield, and myself, and Boris were the people that listen this more than everybody else. I believe that uh, Alessandro, he said he listened maybe a hundred times. See, like, I, 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 you know, like, other day, I just was listening to original uh, kind of uh, rough mix, because Mark sent me just very, very rough MP3, low quality like just one chunk of music and uh you know now seeing this kind of transformation it's amazing because this is actually an album that has to be listened from uh, a to z all 155 minutes it is not something that you can listen only one tune or other tune there is a concept over there because then you can discover so many different uh, things and uh, definitely we are uh, doing another uh, album like this kind of sci-fi because don't forget spaceship is ready to go to planet Gaia. We have to regroup over there and come back to the planet Earth to save the planet from the evil. <laughs> we have to finish the trilogy. The trilogy, of course. Yeah, yeah. It must be. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm, uh, I'm sending you a link of the first tune on YouTube. It's 28 minutes. It's a completely yep. different vibe. You can watch it. Uh, and uh, and then enjoy it. Then you know, uh, album is available on uh, on uh, on the Moon June's website. I will send you also a link. Uh, for now, we are uh, released only like two tracks, but fully will be released next week. But if uh, some of you are buying album now, I can actually send you complimentary uh, uh, download code, and then you can listen the whole thing. Uh, no need to wait for the next week. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Leonardo. Oh, it was uh, great. And, and just to say something like, you know, Marcus started this kind of uh, living the dream thing and how this started, like, you know, uh, uh, me and Marcus were traveling a lot all around the world with Stickman. And then uh, he was posting these uh, photos on uh, Facebook and Instagram and tagging them like living the dream. And, uh, and uh, we were dreaming the dream together because even though like, uh, with Uncle Tony and with uh, Pat Mastelotto, I have a very deep uh, kind of uh, friendship. But with Marcus, because of the age and because of other reasons, like we get to be very close friends, like a brotherhood. And we were leaving this, leaving the dream. And then Marcus said like, uh, okay, I would like to start this kind of Zoom chats, sharing our uh, dream experiences, sharing the dreams with other people, because what else we have in the life than having a dream? Because uh, you know, the only dreams that can uh, allow people to continue to create and to be alive, because without dreams, there is no life for me. And we live in a society where uh, nobody wants to dream. You know, everybody fantasizes about uh, wrong things, but it's not real con artistic dreaming. And, uh, and then this concept will kind of uh, be developed little by little bit to, into something bigger, we hope. And I appreciate and uh, I thank everybody who is uh, joining these kind of sessions. I see like some of you like uh, Mark Sullivan or Henry Lobman or a couple of others that are every, you know, 
do you guys have everything else to do in your life instead of uh, <laughs> uh, joining me and Marcus and to do this thing? <laughs> like, uh, do, you have a, do you have a real job or uh, something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, okay, Marcus, maybe you can say yeah. like the yeah. final words. Yeah. And maybe so, Vicky can say some uh, final words. Yeah, um, so I just wanted to say that um, Mark Wingfield was very very important for this project it's Absolutely. it's a pity that he that he couldn't be here um but he uh, mark will actually join me on thursday night uh, for another uh living the dream episode and we're going to record uh together again we're working on you know we're going to record a new tier album and i hope that uh, some of you will join us again i will post the um yeah the newsletter tomorrow i think and uh, yeah, as, as Leonora said, I mean, it's just uh, uh, I, nobody did expect that things would change so quickly around the world. And here we are and trying to make the best out of it and uh, trying to bring some of the qualities that the live performances had in our lives uh, back via, via these kind of meetings. And, uh, and yes, I mean, we travel the world. You know, we get to meet people from different continents. And I actually I was in Indonesia um, like maybe four years ago. And uh, it's a really wonderful country. And now being, as, uh, you know, associated with one of the greatest Indonesian musicians, it's just an incredible pleasure for me. And uh, if Dwicky wants to, he can, if he's still uh, awake, I don't know, it must be like uh, four in the morning or something. No, like no, it it's actually <laughs> uh, uh, midnight in 35, 12, 35. Uh, uh, okay, okay, not too bad then, yes. No, it's, uh, it's 11 hours from me and five hours from you. Yeah, okay, okay. So maybe uh, if Dwicky still wants to say other, something. Uh, we have a couple of other Indonesian guys. I see my very good uh, friend and absolutely amazing guitar player, Agam Hamza, guy that people have to hear because this guy is something else and I see a couple of other Indonesians and uh, it's great like you know we have people like uh, from uh, all parts of the world from Asia from South Africa from Europe from South America I see Rod from uh, Chile is here uh, hi Rod and uh, USA and I don't see any Canadian here but you know probably there is you know oh, okay there are Canadians great you know we have you know we have people, you know, it's Sunday. Yeah, I know that some people say, oh, I have to cook for my family, like, you know, and they couldn't, you know, but we are trying still, we are kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, seeing like, what is the best time for us to bring people? Because always there is something else that others have to do, like, you know, but we are trying the best, but actually uh, we will edit this very, very slightly. And then Marcus will put on his uh, YouTube channel and then uh, you can uh, see that again. And I will share that, uh, YouTube uh, link with other people and uh, you know you can enjoy and, uh, and then uh, let's let's meet again George I have to ask you a question I have to call you <laughs> no, that's a just yeah. internal, yeah. jo internal joke okay guys uh, Twiki uh, then uh, le le you you have the last word you are the boss of okay. the situation thank you I want to say thanks uh, for those who have attended this forum uh, and I agree also, uh, Mark Wingfield has an extraordinary work, extraordinary role. Once again, thank you. My warm greetings from Indonesia, which is always warm. It's <laughs> very honored to be with you, to be with all of you here. And uh, let's save our earth. Yeah, that's that's our priority. You, let's say let's save this planet in peril, <laughs> and only with a good, uh, positive uh, uh, kind of uh, approach and creative thing, uh, you know. And uh, that's the only way. Like we have to continue creating. Like even though, like I'm pretty sure that we will nobody will make any money from this kind of music, but doesn't matter because we just put like this out, and then uh, like uh, it's a bigger picture. Because, uh, you know, everybody is kind of concerned, you know, we can say, you know, it doesn't matter. Let's create because at the end we'll be all rewarded because that's how the, the life works. If you give something to life, life will give you something back. Not necessarily immediately, but we live in a society where everybody wants results immediately. But all these musicians that they are involved with me, not only these, but others, it's all about creating something that makes us feel um 
useful for this uh, life and this very very strange twilighted zone planet in which we live. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody, and thank you. We all hope you to, to see you again soon. Bye bye, everybody. Ciao, bye, bye. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B